hi welcome back to my channel uh today i'm going to be giving you some autumn book recommendations yay <laughs> cozy, grab a cup of tea, a coffee, a drink of choice. I've also got um what kind of blondie is it? I can't remember. It's like a milky bar blondie. Oh no caramel. I just have a cake. An autumn treat if you will. <laughs> So a good few months ago I asked for some like specific book requests and I was going to make a recommendations video. Uh, I never did. Um, instead I got a new job and I moved house. <laughs> um, but autumn has come around again and Kayla from Brooks and Lala did a like autumn book recommendation request video and I thought that would be just such a fun idea so I have done it too. Um, so I asked people on Instagram and on Twitter for any like specific book requests they have specifically for autumn and I am going to give you some of those suggestions recommendations um I'm also going to throw in a few of the old ones that people submitted because I feel bad I never made that video I will tag everyone that I mention below as well with the book that I mention in the video let's go I'm going to be looking over here because my laptop of notes is here the first recommendation comes from Ben my partner who asked for a spooky scary book spooky scary bookington sends books down your spine book book i have a few suggestions for this one i don't read a lot of spooky scary books i mean i read some thrillers but i'm looking to get more into thrillers and horrors um but from the ones that i have read tiffany d jackson does amazing ya thrillers that are definitely quite scary very dark so look up the trigger warnings um, I have here, oh, it's, not, it's, it's on the second one, um, Monday's Not Coming. I know, Ben, I know that you've already read this, but I don't own Allegedly, so that is the one I'm going to recommend, Allegedly, but here is Monday's Not Coming. Basically, I recommend all Tiffany D. Jackson books for this. I wouldn't, I don't know that it would necessarily describe it as, like, spooky scary, but just if, like, if you're in the mood for, like, a really gripping and, like, traumatizing book um tiffany g jackson is a good an amazing author another one i wanted to mention was the ballad of black tom by victor laval which is like a horror novella set in 1920s new york which i read last year or the year before um and that's really good uh, and then another one i haven't read yet but i want to um so i can't really recommend it but i wanted to give it a shout out is Dead Relatives by Lucy McKnight Hardy. This is a collection of short stories. Lucy McKnight's other book, um, which I will mention in a bit actually, so I won't tell you about it, but I know from her writing, from reading that, her writing, sorry, is very like macabre and scary and twisted and gritty, so I can only imagine that this probably would fulfil spooky scary this is um a proof copy thank you to dead ink for sending that over um i think it comes out either in october or november so by the time that you've seen this it's like almost here or about to be here or is here yeah <laughs> the next request i got was from abby long they asked for something awesome but not rom-com and then i'm going to combine this with another one lily from literary lily asked for a book to read on a stormy day and for this I think for both of those whoop, here by Richard Maguire is such a good choice this book is a graphic novel um, but there's not really many words it's more pictures it basically is set in this corner of a room over thousands of years and you see how the room changes and it goes from like when it was never a room and it's like in a field to like all the way in the future and everything in between and the different families that come through this house it's so cool it's such a cool concept um it gives me really autumnal vibes because of some of the well the like art style and some of the um tree scenes like it's very um it's very autumnal i think personally it's not really it's not a romance the book it's about a room so yeah that is um why i think it's autumnal and then i just feel like this would be such a good book to read in like a stormy 
like on a stormy day because it's such a like cozy comfort like um it's just like ne it's just like no other book i've ever read and it's so easy to flick through and like i can just imagine myself with like a blanket and it like is stormy outside and i'm like like thumbing my way through learning about like what happened in this room um so yeah that is my suggestion um also the hard cover is the same <laughs> as the as the dust jacket love when that happens so that is my suggestion for that okay the next request is from lauren um from wester drumlins um she asked for i'm okay, i'm gonna just directly read it here a queer non-fiction that's somehow autumnal slash spooky i don't know if that exists but challenge presented challenge accepted <laughs> uh yeah this was really tricky um but i loved it so i'll go through this one first my first suggestion is karamo brown my story of embracing purpose healing and hope this is karamo's autobiography biography i can never remember which way around that is karamo wrote it <laughs> it's quite reflective and I feel like autumn is quite a like reflective month you know we're like going into the winter season it's quite a like looking back um on our goals for the year and kind of just like also reflecting um as we like go into the the darker winter months and Karamo is queer so that is why I picked that it's a bit it seems like I feel like it's a bit of a cop out but also I that is kind of the first one I thought of um just like the idea of like reflection and autumn go hand in hand um and it's a very honest read which i really enjoyed so this uh is not spooky though but is it autumnal lauren you can tell me <laughs> the second option i have is queer intentions by amelia abraham a personal journey through lgbtq plus culture um disclaimer i have not read this book yet so can i give it as a recommendation no <laughs> but um it's yellow and yellow is quite autumnal i could try to link some like you know the journey that she goes on representing autumnal journeys but i won't it's yellow that's quite an autumnal color for me <laughs> uh although i really need to get to read this book so i hope those were some good recommendations for you okay so the next one is another combined one so lay asked for a book with witches and my friend Alice also asked for witches, specifically non-sexy witches. Appreciate that. Um, I don't have it with me. I think my pal Amy has got um, my copy. But for this one, I don't read a lot of witchy books. This is genuinely maybe the only witchy book I've read. And that is Water Shall Refuse Them by Lucy McKnight Hardy. This is such an atmospheric book. It is like a coming of age story, but it's not YA. It's very gritty. Like this girl's sibling has just died. And so her and her parents move to Wales. Um, and it kind of follows that. And then it kind of follows her like journey settling in. And it's like set over this like sticky heat wave, which doesn't sound very autumnal, but it's like, it's like so like claustrophobic in a way. And there's really, um, some interesting like witchy rituals going on so it's not necessarily like you know like witch on a broom <laughs> but it's like that kind of gritty witchy vibes and it's really quite disturbing but like excellent um so i hope that is a good recommendation i really enjoyed that book the next request is also from lay and they asked for a queer mystery and for that, I'm going to go with the book I am currently listening to on audio, and that is Swipe Right for Murder by Derek Millman. This is a recommendation I actually got from Karen M. McManus from a live show that she was part of that Beth from Books Nest hosted. I will link it below. I, in this live show, asked for queer YA, like underhyped queer YA recommendations. This is one of the books that karen m mcmanus suggested so i've been listening to it and it's so good it's so much fun it's so ridiculous and wild and crazy and everything i would like in a kind of thriller i will say it doesn't really feel like a ya thriller it kind of feels like a new adult thriller a little bit um which is kind of cool 
and we basically follow this guy who, well, from the title, Swipe Right for Murder, um, he goes on this, like, dating app to, like, hook up with a guy and from there he gets himself into this situation and we go from there. It's very intense and I'm really enjoying it so far. So that is my recommendation. Okay, the next request comes from Rachel from Let Me In The Library. Uh, Rachel asked for dark academic, gorgeous writing, but there has to be a plot. Ideally, also a murder. <laughs> I appreciate that. So for that, I have picked Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iamide. This is dark academia. Um, the writing is amazing. There's definitely plot. It's so gripping. I read it. I read it on audio and then I had to pick it up on in physical copy, which I don't do that often. Um, it, I read it so, so quickly because I was so gripped and needed to know what happened. It's honestly one of the best thrillers I think I've ever read. It's actually a good thriller, if you know what I mean. It really delves into like the depths of institutional racism. Um, I mean, this one has been really popular and I'm so glad because I absolutely loved it. So yeah, that is Ace of Spades. Okay, so back to Lily from Literary Lily. <laughs> um, Lily also asked for a ghost book, but not scary. And I'm going to recommend the book I finished. I bought this yesterday and I read it yesterday, which like I literally never do, um, but I did. Uh, and that is The Sad Ghost Club by Lies Meddings. To be honest, this book is not about ghosts. <laughs> so it's definitely not scary. Um, it's actually just such a lovely graphic novel, um, just about anxiety basically and about fighting anxiety and finding other people that are like you and how much of a solace that can be and so the ghost is quite metaphorical um what am i trying to say the like images and illustrations and the like the trees wait let me find the trees i love a tree illustration like so pretty like really lovely illustrations um so kind of even though it's like not scary at all it's really lovely I think it's a really great one to read this autumn if you're kind of in the mood for like vague vibes of like autumn things but not any form of scare this is a great little book to pick up okay the next request comes from Aoife and I've combined two of her requests into one for this um what were they? <laughs> Tumultuous family relationships and a YA that doesn't feature or centre romance. And for this, I have what I personally feel is the perfect suggestion. <laughs> I picked Run by Cody Keplinger. This was a recommendation I got from Lois from Lo Chan Reads. Um, Lois then actually sent me this copy of I don't know. <laughs> emotional so it we basically follow Bo and Agnes and Bo comes from quite a tumultuous family quite hard family dynamics I guess uh, and then Agnes is blind and she wants to live her life and her parents are very overprotective and so they basically run away together and we follow them and their friendship and that is like the core of this book and along the way it explores really interesting commentary on disability and being blind and your like family's relationship with that and then alongside that we also follow Bo's family so yeah some really tricky but interesting topics covered um but like with the core of like their friendship bringing them together which was so lovely so yeah i would really recommend this um as a ya i thought it was really really good okay i have two requests left so the next request was from hillary from what hillary read um and this was one of the original requests um and she asked for a crime fiction book with great diversity uh, so I've got two suggestions. The first one I don't have, but that is Not A Sound by Heather Gudenkoff, which is a really great crime thriller um, I read last year, I think. I think. The main protagonist is a deaf woman and we follow her as interesting, scary, creepy things start to happen. We see her kind of try to work out what's happening. Uh, and it's a really atmospheric book as well because there's like lots of like, like her and her hearing dog are always like on the water um 
which I just feel like is a really great autumnal atmospheric vibe. So that's a really good book and I've never read a thriller before that had like a deaf protagonist so that was really great. Um, and then the second book I haven't read yet. So it's not a rec it's not a recommendation but it's a I really want to read this um is fire watching by Russ Thomas this is actually Ben's copy the guy like the main policeman detective person in this book is gay um I think gay that is all I know <laughs> I know that there's something about fire about burning there's a police detective that as the kind of center that's all I know that's all I want to know. I don't like going into thrillers knowing like loads. Um, but yeah, I think this is more crime than thriller. So that is why I picked this one. And it's great to begin to see more queer rep in adult crime. So that's really cool. Okay, the final recommendation is a bit of a like cozy autumnal vibe one. The request was from Katie um, from one of the original ones. And she asked for, oh, from Katie from Read with Katie, sorry. Um, and she asked for a book with great descriptions of food. Um, my initial gut response to this request was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I don't know where my copy is. Maybe Amy has it. I'm not so sure. I can't see it on my shelf, so Amy must have it. Um, but that book focuses a lot on food and cooking and um, like the parts of the book are separated into like foods and um, yeah the descriptions of cooking and food in that book is just like oh so good made me hungry. Um, the second book I have which I have here is One Man Guy by Michael Barakiva. This I haven't read in a really long time so it's like you know when you read a book years ago and it's like you're kind of a bit hesitant to like still recommend it because like I might not enjoy it now and then I wouldn't want to recommend it but I probably would still like this book but it was like nearer around the time I'd like just started reading YA so take that as you like anyway. <laughs> so this is One Man Guy uh, and it's just a YA rom-com quite classic contemporary um, but the descriptions of food there's like a lot of Armenian cooking in this book um, and it's really lovely and actually at the back of the book if I'm right I think I think I'm right yeah there's like a recipe for stuffed grape please which is really lovely it kind of like ties in with what it happens in the book that is a really great one for um Armenian food and Armenian cooking and culture and uh also made me very hungry <laughs> uh so that is it that is my recommendations I'm gonna pass one recommendation onto you guys um as a like request because quite a few I got quite a few that were like fake dating I don't really read fake dating that much like that I, I only could like literally only name two one of which is take a hint Danny Brown that's fake dating by Talia Hibbert and then also Hanny and Issues Guide to Fake Dating um I assume that is fake dating but I haven't read it yet <laughs> I have it in the other room but apart from that I don't really have any fake dating rough recommendations so if you have one like leave it below also while I have you Jam also asked for both enemies to lovers and fake dating combined I have nothing and so I'm passing that over to you if you can think of one that is both enemies to lovers and fake dating leave it below because I want to read that book. <laughs> that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a little coffee emoji or something like that because I've been enjoying my cup of tea during this video. <laughs> if you have any other suggestions based on like the requests, then leave them below as well because I'm sure everyone would love to see them. Um, and I will see you in a new video. Bye. Cut. One second. <laughs> I've just realised in this camera angle you can see this portrait here which is a portrait, <laughs> a picture that Ben drew of me. You can see the little fuzz and it says cool shirt which I take as a high compliment. I felt like I needed to explain. Okay bye.